Hello everyone. Today is a beautiful day the Lord has made for us. On behalf of the founder and general overseer, wife and team, we are glad you are here with us and welcome to Holy Ghost Deliverance in Christ Ministry International, aka Paul L. Becker Ministries. Our mission theme is Jesus Finish Work Movement. And our mission is to preach to all nations about the good news, which is Christ Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost. Indoors and outdoors meetings are our main goals for reaching the unreachable people. Church planting and making leaders is all included in the package. A place where everyone is welcome to meet God and make their supplications through Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Our monthly and weekly programs. Every first Sunday of every month, we have Holy Communion and every Sunday's online live stream services at 11 o'clock a.m. And every Friday's we have Holy Ghost Hour, Deliverance and Baptism with Holy Communion.
Haleluya, haleluya, haleluya. People of God, we are glad that we are here again with the good news of our Father, Son, Jesus and His Kingdom, Yahweh and the power of the Holy Spirit. As usual, this is Holy Ghost Hour, Deliverance, Baptism and with Communion. So, we are about to play a song. We do not have a copyright to the song. The owner, all the right belongs to her. She's a familiar song done by a citizen of my bad country, my motherland, Sierra Leone. Stay tuned as we listen to her song and the opening prayer will follow soon. We love you. Bye for this short break. See you soon.
Amen and amen and amen. Our dear sister, Minister Amzoke, on behalf of the ministry, family, and the entire team, we say thank you for your song, your wisdom, your talent was well appreciated and we acknowledge your gift that the Holy Spirit will help you to do more for the kingdom of God, Yahweh, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Welcome to Holy Ghost Deliverance in Christ Ministry International TV, a.k.a. Paul Elbaker. It's all about the kingdom of God, and it's all about the gospel of Jesus and the fulfillment of, of the promise that Jesus promised us that the Holy Spirit will come and he will be with us forever. My dear brothers and sisters, it takes the Holy Spirit to be bold to present one of the most difficult tasks on planet Earth. Because you that stand for the truth, you are always a target for those that believe lies. Because their father, Satan, has come and blinded them and they believe whatever he tells them. So you that stand all with the truth to set people free from the lies, from the prison, from the bondage that Satan has imprisoned them, you are always going to be a target. But the good news is the same boldness the same anointing, the same wisdom, the same grace that was on the second Adam that was blameless, that he was able to overcome this war place that was said, that was pronounced by his father, our father, God, Yahweh. It's the same spirit that we have with us forever. The gift that is bigger than all the millions that you can be given here on planet Earth by someone. Because when you are rich without spiritual embankment, Without heaven approves you, you will become slave to that very prosperity that you are. My dear brothers and sisters, the devil knows what it takes to be empowered and to be enriched with the third personality, the Holy Spirit. We are spirit-filled human beings. Anyhow you look at it here on planet Earth, there are two spirits that controls human beings. Because we are here operating under two forces, that was pronounced by the greater one that the lesser forces dust you shall eat all your life and we were created out of dust because of our rebelliousness 
because of sin, Satan is always controlling human beings' flesh, the outwardness. It doesn't matter how anointing you are. Satan even wants you anointing running from your head all over the place. You are the one that he wants more because the Bible said so. Jesus was filled, loaded with the Holy Ghost and Satan showed up So Satan is not intimidated of how anointed you are because he was given the authority because anointing is not for animals. Anointing is not for sticks. It's not for this planet art. No, it's for us that look like the one that created everything here on planet earth and god sees us he sees himself he sees his greatness he sees his ability he sees his might he sees his love he sees how great he is god because he is up there is his spirit but he sees himself Enough. And because Satan is God's enemy, he failed in heaven. He came here, the Bible called him the God of this world. He said, Jesus. I didn't create this thing. I doesn't even know how to create this prosperity, this luxury, this pleasant thing, but it was given to me. And whosoever worship me, bow down to me, I will give to him. So Satan categorically spoke to Jesus. He said, they gave it to me. Oh, I don't know how many of your destiny you have sold to Satan and you have become a slave to Satan. Be careful Satan can never dwell in a family, in a nation, in a community if God doesn't have a good plan for them. Because Satan doesn't go to an empty place. He goes where God's heart beat is. And with all the three enticement that he gave Jesus, Jesus was hungry, really thirsty, really needed food because he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Why? Because the flesh was on him with which is the dwelling, which is the food for Satan as his father gave it to him. And because Jesus came to set me and you free, he defeated all the three temptations that Jesus brought that Satan brought to him. The more the reason, Satan knows who Jesus is. And Satan knows 
who Jesus has called. And Satan knows who Jesus has placed the Holy Ghost in. Let us pray. Your freedom, your deliverance, your salvation has come. Holy, 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 is your name, our Father. Great is your name, mighty is your name, we bow down and worship you, we bow down. And honor you, holy, 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 holy is your name, holy, holy, holy. We came to surrender our entire affairs to you today. You are great, you are mighty, you are loving, you are kind. We commit this entire moment into your hands. Even those that you have touched, even those that you want to bless them today and brings confirmation to them through us, through this ministry. We commit their life, we commit their body, we commit their souls into your hands. Most especially the entire universe, the entire globe, whatever challenges, whatever sets back, Whatever circumstances that is beyond their control, we commit their nations, their inhabitants, their dreams, their visions into your hands. Those that are in authorities, govern them. They are not perfect because all we are not perfect. But in Jesus, your son Christ, our brother, we believe in him, we acknowledge in him, we obey in him and follow his commandment has made us righteous, holy. You see our holiness, you see our righteousness through him. We thank you, Abba Father. We thank you for those that are struggling in sick bed. Those that are traveling by air, land and sea. We commit their entire safety into your hands, sweet Holy Spirit. Let the ministry angels control their driving, their vehicle, their movement for safe, final destinations. We rebuke untimely death. 
those that medical has condemned them. They are waiting for their time to die. We bring life to them now, wherever they are. Sweet Holy Spirit, you know, let the ministry angels bring them back to life in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. This session is open. Good people. Great people. Welcome to this TV land. Drop your pride. Drop your ego. And allow God's foolishness by the convictions of the Holy Spirit to overshadow you. God uses common things, foolish things to bring you to a place of assurance, deliverance, victory. Communion is about to roll. I give you few minutes or seconds to examine yourself for purity. You do not need to say it to me. Say to the one that is greater than my very self, than this ministry. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, this October is still centering communion to God for an eye opening. If your eyes are not open spiritually, your eye should not be open on physical. You will lose it. You will be disappointed. Because anything that is being seen in the physical, you have to be very careful how you should receive them. If you haven't seen it clearly in the realms of the spirit, when it comes, sometimes your very destiny that you have been fasting and praying to God for, they are not going to come well finished and prepared. So sometimes they will come in an unpleasant situation, just like nations, the world was expecting God's second chance. But when God finally granted the whole world a second chance, because their spiritual eyes was blinded, they failed to acknowledge God's second chance. So sometimes the physical comes in a critical conditions, or you are there, you have been asking God that God you 
ordained marriage between a man and a woman. So sometimes when God brings it, they will not come well finished as you are expected. But if you are not grounded, open in the realms of the spirit, you will be disappointed. So this spoken words was given to my own very self and I will never spoke to the world, to the universe, without my own very self having tasted it. The Bible says when the farmer suffered to plant all the food, all the groups, all the vegetables, they will be the first to taste it before it goes out. So this ministry believe in the first hand tested message. Sometimes if God says I am about to punish, to bring reproach to nations, it started with the very prophet. You will see God's prophets are going through difficult, shameful, humiliated situations. If you are very wise enough, you better put yourself together. Because God said the judgment start in his house. So God uses deliverance in a foolish and a simple way. So, your eyes need to be open spiritually. God told the prophet, he said, you see the physical, but I see what no man sees. Let these three months that is remaining, it's almost now two and a half months for us to finish 2024. You need to see beyond the physical. So this Holy Communion today, again, let God open your eye. When Jesus was resurrected, when he appeared to several, he break breads with them and he prayed. And the Bible said, their eye open and they saw okay this is Jesus so this ritual as you may call it other people say carnival how can you eat Jesus body oh yeah it's very sweet and it's very delicious and it's very important he taught it fit that we should be in him and he should be in us. So this communion, as you have examined yourself, is not Paul Baker, but it's Jesus' body and Jesus' blood. The blood that is greater than all blood. Satan knows who Jesus' body is. He knows who Jesus' blood is. Eat and drink and your eyes will be opened spiritually. Drink. Sweet Holy Spirit, we thank you for who you are. 
Thank you for this holy communion. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we are still dealing with Nehemiah and I am getting the urge or the notification by the Holy Spirit that we are lowering this example of Nehemiah that nations of their citizens that God has selected few. There is no nation, no country here on planet Earth that God has in choose men and women that all their duty is to lift that nation to God and God will come to town. Some of them, they are unidentified and those are the very powerful and superior people in the land. Everybody have God's kingdom ministry in a different form. Just like God told the prophet, he said, don't you think so? He said, I have kept over thousand than have surrendered to the demons of their nations. So, Nehemiah as an example, is lowering down. God is re-amplifying himself to men and women here on planet Earth that leadership is of him. No matter what condition the circumstances of a nation. God chose leaders according to the people's heart. They are all important in the eyes of God. I said it a few days ago here on this TV that you, a president or a king of a nation, be careful how you address another man's or another nation's president or king. That same oil that came upon you as a leader in your country is the same. We use David as an example because David knew that leadership is of God in all David error in all David wretchedness his goal that he believed in he trusted in knows that who is he to destroy God's anointing? Oh yes, they will fight you. They will challenge you. 
But when you set yourself apart and see God that he owns everything, Victory, success, deliverance is always yours. So Nehemiah type, he was a simple and a common somebody. His duty was just to serve a king a wine when the king wants to pleasure or to have himself a little bit high or drunk or for the stomach sake. So drinking wine has so many reasons why he wants to take it or he wants to have a good sleep. Because the other day, Paul the Apostle says, he said you can take wine for the stomach sake. So some people will take it for heart reason, for so many reasons. But when you abuse it, it comes an error. So Nehemiah was a common somebody, but his mind was with God. So as we are giving thanksgiving today, I am very, very happy person. Whenever I have finished God's assignment on a particular book in the Holy Bible, Ezekiel. Ezekiel reading the metaphorical aspect that is embedded with it, I can't handle it by my own flesh until the Holy Spirit help me. I will dodge, I will balance, I will do all kind way just for him to give me another book. But because the kingdom of God is not about you. You are just God's instrument for his people that are out there. God can leave you and use another. He has plenty. But just as Moses said, God, we will not move if your presence didn't go with us. So when God's presence is with you, rest assured, my brother, rest assured, my sister, that you are on the right path. Now we are trusting God. Nations like this very nation that I am, they have few days. They are about to choose a new leader. But those that cease in the realms of the spirit and see God, God is still telling them, Bring me to town with prayers, with supplications, with obedience, with sacrifice. That brings God to town. And our prayer as missionaries or an apostle that is sent to these nations, that the two main political parties in this nation, that we see this country bigger than them and God will be the author, the finisher of the hem of the affairs. Because 
when Satan is overruling and riding and controlling your mindset against God, he has already seen your destruction. It is very scriptural that God has dealt with A, B, C before you. He owns the planet Earth. So my brothers and sisters, as it's a thanksgiving, I felt, I felt the pain. I cried to God. My family was almost about to fall apart. God's challenges because you have chosen him and Satan is fighting you. If he is not with you, sometimes just as God was the one that spoke about Job. Job didn't have any business with Satan. But the Bible says Satan was monitoring Job 24 hours. He knows Job in and out. He knows what Job's love. Satan. And one day, Job was not there and God boasted about Job and Satan said, Oh God, just leave me because you have protected Job so greatly. That is the reason he is worshipping you. So he lied. That is why God never spoke to Satan. Satan is always lying to God. He is not afraid to lie to God. That is why God did never, he don't have communications to ask Satan to explain. He will lie in front of God right away. He is a father of all lies. We saw what happened in Genesis chapter 3. Or you go more. God didn't ask Satan. Satan would have twisted and say, if was the one that asked me to give. And God says, Satan, I know you. You will lie and you will lie. I don't ask you. So sometimes, my brothers and sisters, just as I said that the team of this year, blame God. I blame God in everything. For instance, Anything that happened to me in this foreign land, I blame God. Because he took me from my country and said, come. And I will use you to speak. So in every circumstances that you are going through, blame him. And he will be provoked. And he will rescue and he will deliver you. Thank God that I finished So my thanksgiving start with my own very self. Maybe you are out there. God has been spoken to you. You have going through vigorous situation, vigorous circumstances, unexplainable situations that you yourself, you have done everything, but the more the gravity of the situation is heavier. Sometimes, when you try to cover up your shame for others not to see, your miracle will never show up. Oh, Jesus, you were saving others. The other day we saw you, you even rose Lazarus back to life. He was rotting and Zarius and other people. Why can't you do and deliver yourself? So sometimes your mockery, your laughter, 
your provocations need to be seen by the public. And that we say to God, now you have limited, you have said, you have done all what you think you can do to my servant. Now give me way. Let me show up and bring him up. Just as God brought his sons alive from the grave, you are coming alive. So I don't know how many shame has knocked at your door. Jesus didn't promise us that all is going to be glitter and gold and celebrity. He even said, Woe unto you that wants men to say good things about you, which I am very much careful about that. Because I have experienced it so many times. The very people that say, oh, he is so good. He is a knight. The same people will turn against you. For those of you that are leader, making leadership or wants to be, be careful about the cheerfulness of the multitude, the crowd. They will say to you, he is a murderer. He is a demon. Be careful with him or her. But when God is with you and you are with God, with their negative spoken to you, God will turn it around. Just like how David acts Saul, Saul, what have I done to you, King Saul? You have evil spirit that God has brought into you. I am using God's wisdom, God's talent on me to play her music that deliverance will come and you are throwing javelin on me. You wants to destroy me. Do not withhold good. So there are some of you, Satan, his demons and his agents, they are doing everything to discredit you. They are not discrediting you because you are an empty vessel, because you have something. The whole completions of Bible, of God's kingdom, here on planet earth was fulfilled through Jacob, a supplanter, a crook, a rogue. And God said, Jacob, I love. Esau, I hate. May God never call you, he hates you. And today, how sweet, how joyous, how excitement it is when we are reading this history about him now. So sometimes, what God has placed in you Satan is going to come and discredit you. Sometimes you ask yourself, why I did these things? But the enemy is trying to discredit you the day, the time, the hour that you will be used now by God to bring deliverance. Just like 
Saul of Tarsus that became Paul the Apostles. My dear brothers and sisters, let me, before I expand that, you that are presidents or about to go into presidency to rule a country, be careful about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the king of all kings. That is why the man did he have, he's not a religious somebody. He came to bring God's kingdom here on planet earth and bring to reconcile, to bring connect human being to his father. But people will now use and form religious city out of him. Jesus is the king of all kings. He has sacrificed and he is seated at the right hand of his father pleading for you, that wicked leader, for you, that ungodly president, for you, that ungodly leader. He is still pleading that Jesus will say to his father, he said, Father, he was in my journey. He was on that cross, he was in me. His sin was in me. When you turn your back away from me, when I call you Father, Father, why have you forsake me? So Jesus is seated at the right hand of his Father, not celebrating, but he is still pleading for the type like you. Oh yes, you have right to go against wicked and corrupt and pervert so-called religious people. That makes you a leader. But do not weaponize and fight God's kingdom promoter. They haven't done anything. As long as they are preaching about love, peace, deliverance, and reminding people that God hates sins, that is all what God loves. He doesn't like sin. But those that are using religious to splunder, like they are using Jesus' name to suppress. Yes, Christianity has a bad name. Oh, do not take it for granted. It has a smell name. There are families that are going through Headache, they have already poor because some so-called pastors has used the name of Jesus to present to family like Jesus is a magician, which is not. But let Satan don't weaponize you to fight against God's kingdom. Shame, failure, disappointment, disaster will befall you at your face. The time has come that God will speak to men and women. Yes, nations that believe in exercising vote right. You may speak to ABC. You may have all the crowd. But one second, one minute, God can speak to an individual and the table will turn around. So please, we are encouraging you. If Satan's voice is overshadowing you in your vision, it's a sneer. He wants to destroy you. He wants to discredit you. He wants to bring calamity and shame to you. Let Nehemiah type govern be on you. God is still God. There are men and women. God hacking to their cry in a second. 
He is a God that doesn't broke his covenant. He never broke his covenant for anybody. He comes to town because men and women has invited him with their cry, with their supplications, with their humbleness. That is God. He gave everybody free will. He is not a God that inquisitive. But he sees at the same time every he sees everything. But if there is no connection between you and him, that is why his son Jesus said it the other day, you cannot serve two masters, choose one. When Paul of Tarso, that became Saul, uh, Apostle Paul, he was against Jesus with passion. He was really against Jesus. Anyone that preaches about Jesus, Saul, Paul of Tarsus will kill you. He ordered people to kill. But because God has power over everything on the road to Damascus, he surrendered to God. And he became the best writer, the best presenter of the kingdom of God and the gospel of Jesus. So do not see yourself that you are greater than God. He can change circumstances in a second. All about him, God. His glory. He wants to see his powerfulness, his greatness through us, through human beings, through nations. Holy Ghost deliverance in Christ's ministry 201, October 18, 2004. We love you. Jesus loves you. Prepare yourself. Altar call and deliverance prayer and baptism will follow soon. Amen.
dear brothers and sisters, you can't afford this message to end without you accepting Jesus to be your Lord, to be your Savior in everything you do. Prepare yourself as you are opportune to speak to him, cry to him, seek him, knowledge, wisdom. I give you a few seconds to do that. Amen. Just a short and a quick prayer. See, Jesus, there is no excuse before you. You know who my name is. You know my character. You know everything about me. Forgive me. I surrender to you. Have mercy. Wash to me. Change my iniquity. And give me a new heart. In Jesus name. We clap for you. Seal. And settle. Your name has been written. In the book. Of new life. A general prayer. Is about to rule. The Holy Spirit is about to come on you now. It's about to change your situations. He did to me. Beginning of 2004. Towards the end. Just like my three months to complete every year is a memory to me it was not an easy I will do I will not battle but allow the way he loves you that is why he brought you to listen to messages just as I did over and over and impartations encountered overshadow and my life never be the same. The authority being invested in me by my father Yahweh in the name of your son's name Jesus Christ of Nazareth and by the power of the sweet Holy Spirit Sweet Holy Ghost, your people are thirsty. They are hungry for you. Let your baptism fall upon them now. Receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Receive the gentle spirit. Receive him now. Oh, Makeria Nanama. Receive. His gentleness. Receive his greatness. He's coming upon you. Your life. Your eyes. Your mind. Your thinking. Has been rejuvenated. Towards Yahweh. Towards Jesus. Towards the Holy Spirit. Receive a new heart. Receive an all. Receive your breakthrough. Receive your deliverance. Receive him now. Receive him now. Receive him. Receive him. Receive him. The garment of filthiness. The garment of sickness. The garment of shame has been broken. Restored by Yahweh. Restored by Jesus. Restored by the Holy Spirit. 
in the name of the Father, and by the power of my Father Yahweh, and by the power of my brother Jesus, and by the power of my helper, the teacher, the Holy Ghost, we seal this session in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. No counterattack, no retaliation, no setback will befall you. We love you. Jesus loves you. Shalom. Share, like, and subscribe. And click that notification button. You will be the first when we are online. The ministry, the stream is about to end. But the empowerment of the Holy Spirit will never end. We love you. You want to be a financial blessing to this ministry. We encourage you to do so, please, according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. When He leads you to be a blessing to His kingdom, it shall be well with you. We say thank you in advance and God bless you. Bye bye. Bye bye for now. Amen. <laughs>